Great to see you, everyone. Welcome back to another edition of This Week in CA Football, presented by GEICO. I'm Bobby Broyles, along with Rob Washburn. As we flip the calendar to October, Rob, we have some big-time top 25 conference matchups coming up. But before we break those down, what were some of the takeaways from this past Saturday's action? Yeah, another great weekend of CA Football action. Let's start with the conference games. In a battle of the top 25 teams on Long Island, Villanova jumped out to a quick 21-0 lead over Stony Brook, but the Seawolves came roaring back to pull out a 29 27 victory. We spent the past three weeks talking about the power of the Long Island Express, but it was a three touchdown passing performance from Joe Carbone that led Stony Brook to its fourth straight win and a 2 0 record in CAA play. Also moving to 2-0 in the CAA was JMU, which put together its most complete performance of the season and rolled to a 63-10 victory at rival Richmond. Juwan Hamilton opened the game with a 93-yard kickoff return for a touchdown, Ben DiNucci passed for 248 yards and three scores, and the Dukes defense forced five turnovers, including a back-breaking 100-yard pick six by Jimmy Moreland, which was his third straight game returning an interception mm. for a touchdown. Elon also turned in a great all-around effort in their conference opener and picked up a 30-9 win over New Hampshire. Offensively, the sophomore tandem of Davis Cheek and Cortez Weeks hooked up 14 times for 165 yards through the air. Malcolm Summers churned out 124 yards on the ground, and the Phoenix defense held the Wildcats to just 46 yards and no points in the second half as Marcus Willoughby was in the backfield all afternoon with four and a half tackles for loss. Towson and Rhode Island recorded big non-conference victories. The Tigers kicked off their 50th anniversary celebration by beating the Citadel 44-27. Tom Flacco earned himself National Offensive Player of the Week honors after passing for 253 yards and two touchdowns and setting a new Towson rushing record for a quarterback with 185 yards and two TDs on only 15 carries. Rhode Island went on the road and held off Harvard 23-16 under the Friday Night Lights. National Special Teams Player of the Week, Amir Dorsey, returned to kickoff 97 yards for a touchdown in the third quarter, and the Rams' defense sealed the win as DJ Stewart and Justin Hogan intercepted passes in the final four minutes. As the dust settled on Monday, once again, there were seven CA football teams ranked in both the stats and AFCA coaches' polls. An incredible accomplishment that mm. speaks just how strong this league is from top to bottom. Yes, indeed, Rob. As we said to begin the show, we have three top 25 <laughs> conference matchups that headline Saturday's action. Let's begin with a top 10 matchup in Harrisonburg as Jamie and Elon will clash and bridge forth at 1.30 on CAA.tv. Also on Masson and SNY, two teams coming off two impressive victories last week. Yeah, you could make a strong case that this is the top game ag across all of FCS yes. this week with the second-ranked Dukes and the ninth-ranked Phoenix facing off before a sellout crowd at Bridge Four Stadium. And when you break down these two teams, they follow the same blueprint for success. Offensively, they're both extremely balanced with powerful running games and efficient quarterbacks who put the ball on target and rarely make mistakes. Elon features Malcolm Summers, who's coming off back-to-back 100-yard -back performances and didn't have the opportunity to play in last year's game versus the Dukes due to injury. JMU counters with a deep stable of backs led by Marcus Marshall, who's averaging over 11 yards per carry in the past three contests. At quarterback, Elon's Davis Cheek and JMU's Ben DiNucci are both completing better than 70% of their passes, and two of the CA's best receivers will be on display with the Phoenix's Cortez Weeks and the Duke's Riley Stapleton. Now defensively, both teams are very solid. Elon's held its last three opponents under 270 total yards, and JMU's given up just 231 total yards over its past three contests. They're led by a couple of senior All-Americans and Elon, Elon linebacker Warren Messer and JMU cornerback Jimmy Moreland. The Dukes have won 20 straight CAA games and own a 19-game winning streak at Bridge Four Stadium. They clinched the CAA championship with a 31-3 victory at Elon last November. The big question is whether the gap between the two programs is closed, and I can't wait to find mm -hmm. out on Saturday. Absolutely. At 3.30 on Fox College Sports and the Fox Sports app, Maine finally returns mm -hmm. to Alphonse Stadium and will play host to Villanova. These two teams, Rob, on the opposite end last week coming off tough losses. Yeah, very tough losses for both teams last week, but in different ways. Yeah. Now, for Maine, you have to wonder if being on the road for the entire month of September caught up with them in a 35-14 setback at Yale. Starting quarterback Chris Ferguson was out with a shoulder injury, and freshman running back Ramon Jefferson got hurt in that contest. The result was only 264 yards of offense. Quarterback Isaiah Robinson was able to connect on a couple of long TD passes to Ernest Edwards and Jake Ron Blair, but finished just 10 of 27. It's unknown whether Ferguson or Jefferson will be back on Saturday, but Maine will certainly need to be better. Now, on the other side of the ball, the black hole defense that has been so dominant all year was unable to slow down Yale. They are also banged up, but I would be surprised if that group, led by linebacker Sterling Sheffield, doesn't return to form in front of their home crowd. 
Now, as we mentioned in the open, Villanova jumped out to a 21-0 advantage at Stony Brook, saw the lead get away, but nearly rallied to force overtime until a two-point conversion pass was batted away in the final minute. Wildcat quarterback Zach Bednarzik, who has thrown 12 touchdown passes this season, left the game with a shoulder injury, and it's unknown whether he'll be ready to go on Saturday. If he can't, Villanova will need some of the other weapons on offense, like running back Aaron Forbes and receiver Jared McClendon, to step up. Now, Villanova's defense did a good job slowing down the Stony Brook running game a week ago, but gave up some plays through the air. Both of these teams are still ranked in the top 25 nationally, and they have wins over FBS opponents. But with as competitive as the CA race is this season, it's a game that could have huge implications for both programs down the road. Yes. Yep. At 4 o'clock, our third top 25 matchup. It is our CA Game of the Week on collegesportslive.com. Towson will be at home to take on Stony Brook. Yeah, both of these teams come into the game unbeaten in CA play and riding huge waves of momentum. Stony Brook's won four in a row after rallying from that 21-point deficit to beat Villanova last Saturday. Running backs Jordan Gowans and Donald Leotine had their streak of three consecutive 100-yard games come to an end. Their quarterback Joe Carbone stepped up in a big way, throwing for 270 yards and three touchdowns. The Seawolves' defense stiffened in the second half, limiting Villanova to just six points over the final 35 minutes and continues to do a great job of keeping teams out of the end zone. They will be tested against a Towson offense that has rolled up over 400 yards in every game this season and piled up a season-best 608 yards in a 44-27 win over the Citadel last week. We're running out of superlatives for quarterback nope. Tom Flacco, who's thrown for at least 245 yards and two touchdowns in every game this season and last week showed off his running ability with a school record 185. Five yards. He currently leads all of FCS in total offense. Wide receiver Shane Leatherberry has caught at least five passes in every game and tops the Tigers with 23 receptions. The Tigers defense did a decent job slowing down Citadel's triple option attack, but will face a different type of challenge this week with Stony Brook's power running game. The last three meetings between these two teams have been decided by eight points or less, and we should be in store for another close one on Saturday. At 3 on NBC Sports Washington Plus and CA.TV, Danny Rocco makes his first trip back to Robin Stadium as his Blue Hens will take on the Spiders. A huge game for both teams, Rob, as they need to start piling some wins to stay in the playoff picture. Yeah, both of these teams should be anxious to get back on the field and erase the memories of their most recent outings. Yep. Yeah, the Blue Hens had a bye week following their 38-10 loss at top-ranked North Dakota State, and it's their first conference game since falling to Rhode Island in their opener in August. Quarterback Pat Kehoe has strung together three straight 200-yard passing performances before struggling at NDSU, and he will look to return to form. Delaware would also like to get its running back tandem of Kanai Kane and Dijon Lee rolling. The Blue Hens defense, which was dominant in wins over Lafayette and Cornell, is looking to bounce back from a tough day in Fargo. There's plenty of talent and experience on that side of the ball with linebackers Troy Reeder and Charles Bell, and in safety, Nasir Adderley. Now, Richmond fell 63-10 to rival JMU at home last Saturday when big plays and five turnovers led to many of their issues. Quarterback Kevin Johnson has passed for over 245 yards in his past four games and will look to get the ball in the hands of all CAA wideouts Cortrell Simpson and Tyler Wilkins. The Spiders' running game did get a spark last week from freshman Aaron Dykes, who picked up 53 yards on 13 carries. Richmond's defense has dealt with numerous injuries since giving up over 1,000 yards in the past two weeks and losses to Stony Brook and JMU. They will need to make some adjustments to keep the Spiders in the game on Saturday. As you mentioned, it will be an emotional day on both sides as Danny Rocco returns to Richmond to face many of the players he and his staff recruited. But it's also a critical game for two teams looking to pick up their first win in CA play. Yep. Our final conference matchup to preview is UAlbany coming off the bye week, making the trip to Williamsburg to take on the Tribe at 3.30 on CA.TV and Cox Your View. First time these two teams have met ever, Rob. Yeah, pretty amazing. This is the first matchup between these two teams, but that's going to change on Saturday. Yep. UAlbany won back-to-back -back games at home to even its record at 2-2 two and two, and now will be looking to get its first victory in CAA play. The strength of the Great Danes has been on offense, where they are averaging nearly 400 yards per game. Quarterback Vince Testaverde has thrown for over 300 yards in each of the past two contests, and freshman wide receiver Dev Holmes is leading FCS in receiving with 28 catches for 587 yards and four touchdowns. The U Albany has had success moving the ball on the ground with the tandem of Elijah E.B. Token Hanks and Carl Mofor. U Albany's defense has shown improvement over the past couple weeks, and they will be hoping to make another step forward with the return of a few injured players after the bye week. 
And William & Mary fell 23-0 to Colgate in its home opener last week and has struggled to put points on the board while facing a stretch of top-ranked defenses. Quarterback Sean Mitchell threw for 251 yards last week, which was his third 200-yard performance in four games, and receivers Devontae Dedman and Jack Armstrong both had strong nights against Colgate. However, the Tribe running game has yet to get untracked. Now, William Mary's defense has been solid and did a nice job of forcing Colgate to settle for field goals last week. They'll face another tough challenge this week trying to keep the Great Danes from breaking any big plays. A pair of non-conference matchups to wrap up Week 6. New Hampshire returns to Durham to take on Holy Cross out of the Patriot League at noon. Wildcats hoping for some payback in this one, Rob. Yeah, indeed they are after the Crusaders beat UNH 51-26 yep. a year ago. Now, New Hampshire still looking for its first win of the season and is glad to open a three-game homestand at Wildcat Stadium, where they are 52-8 over the past decade. New Hampshire's offense put together some good drives in the first half of last week's game at Elon, with Sean Coyne catching five passes and also running 25 yards for a touchdown. Now, quarterback Trevor Knight's injured shoulder continues to improve, and there's a chance he sees some action on Saturday. The Wildcats' defense held Elon to just a pair of field goals in the second half as Quinlan Dean and Pop Lacey both recorded double-digit tackles. They will need to slow down a Holy Cross offense that put up 367 yards through the air and 520 yards overall in last year's game. The Crusaders are just 1-4 this season, but that one win came again in overtime against a good Yale team, and two of their, seven losses, two of their losses have been by seven points or less. Wrap up week six with Rhode Island as the Rams will face off with an Ivy League squad for the second week in a row as they host Brown at 1 o'clock on CA.TV. A big rivalry game for Rhodey Saturday. Yeah, it's the annual Governor's Cup game for bragging rights in the yep. state of Rhode Island, and the Rams are trying to get the cup back after a tough 24-21 setback a year ago. A 17th-ranked Rhode Island's coming off a 23-16 victory at Harvard last Friday and is 3-1 despite playing three of its four games on the road. Quarterback Juwan Lawson continued his outstanding season by throwing for one TD and running for another in the first half last week, but suffered a knee injury, and his status for Saturday is not clear. Now, who's ever under center will need to get the ball to Isaiah Coulter, who has recorded over 100 receiving yards in three straight games. The Rams' defense stepped up big time last Friday. LB Mack was sensational with 11 tackles and two sacks, and fourth quarter interceptions by DJ Stewart and Justin Hogan sealed that win. Brown is 1-2 overall and defeated Georgetown 35-7 a week ago. Quarterback Michael McGovern passed for 269 yards and ran for 53 more in that win. CASports.com backslash live scores is your source for live scoring and in-game live stats throughout this Saturday. Also remember to check in with us on later Saturday night with complete wrap-up with our CA Football Rewind on CAFootball.com. You can continue to follow the league on our many social media platforms such as Facebook.com backslash CA Football and Twitter at CA Football using the hashtag CAFB. The CA Football on-campus crew was in Williamsburg this past weekend. You can relive all the sights and sounds now on our social media platforms and tune in Thursday on our latest Going Deep feature on The Tribe. Yeah, we talk all the time about how football has the power to lift people up and bring people together. This week, we sat down with senior cornerback Ray Smith to learn more about what doors football has opened for him. That is it from us today. Enjoy the games, everyone.